We'll start off with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And Wake Forest, uh, really good season last year. I mean, good gracious. This bunch it went 11-3 and three, uh, for Dave Clawson, went 7-1 and one in the conference uh, before the conference uh, championship game. Their postgame win expectancy was very surprising to me. If you take all the stats in each of these games and you put a percentage of whether or not they would have won the game, 7.45 and 5.55 for this. Now, that obviously includes the ACC championship game, which they were not in uh, basically pretty early in that game. But only 7.5 wins on the season and 5.5 and and losses is a little, a little bit surprising to me. Um, I think... I, I'm not sure what to think of this, honestly. It's it's just a little bit surprising when you look at the fact that they had 11 wins and they ended up 7.45 uh, post-game win expectancy wins. That's that's just strange to me. They do have a lot of returning production, 34%. Uh, sorry, sorry, 72%. It's number 34 in the country. The offense brings back the majority. They are number 20 in returning production. And, the I mean, this was a... Big, dramatic difference between offense and defense for this team. Number 16 in offensive PPA per drive. Number 94 in PPA per drive on defense. And for those that want to know what that means, that's predicted points added per drive. It's uh, an analytic metric. So um, you look at this, basically Wake Forest could not stop the run. They were number 119 in defensive rushing success rate allowed. Uh, Let's look at the offense here. Offense is going to be great with the quarterback, Sam Hartman. Um... Wide receiver A.T. Perry is back. The wide receiver Donovan Green, who was injured last year. Four offensive line starters are back. This offense under Dave Clawson, regardless of returning talent, is always going to be pretty good. With this much returning talent and with that quarterback that understands that RPO system, they are going to be good. They are going to be really good. Now, I would say that they need to improve their rushing success rate, but last year they didn't really need it. You know, they were number 65 in rushing success rate. Okay. This team was number four in points per scoring opportunity. They were nine, uh, number 19 in scoring opportunities. That's drives that you have a first down inside the opponent's 40-yard line. Now, it's not red zone numbers and whatnot, but this is this is a peak offense. They were able to get onto the opponent's side of the field with a first down and a chance to score often, and they did it often. Number four in points per scoring opportunity. That is really good quality possessions. Now, the bad side is the defense. Right, defense again number ninety four in PPA per drive. They were they were not great, and they obviously knew that. Right, new de- uh, the new defensive coordinator here is Brad Lambert. He flipped Purdue's defense around in just one season. Uh, Purdue's defense was really really good last year. We'll talk about them once we get to the Big Ten, of course. At Wake's PPA margin number sixty four, even with the number sixteen PPA per drive offense, it tells you that this team was was not good. 64 for a PPA uh, margin is not great, especially when you are as re- as good as they are on offense. So at this, I mean, they, they lose their leading tackler, uh, Masterson. They lose three defensive linemen. They lose three defensive backs. Look, the new defense coordinator, Lambert, has good pieces to work with. Defensive end, uh, Bothroyd, and the linebacker, Sminda. Uh, the rest of the defense looks to be filled with underclassmen, but again, if the defense was not good last year, does it really hurt you all that bad when you lose some of those guys? I would venture to say no. I don't think it hurts that much. So when you look at the keys to the season for this, uh, they are projected favorites in, da, 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 let's see, they're projected favorites in eight games here. And I think that that's, you know, that's reasonable, especially considering that their post game win expectancy last year was. Uh, 7.5 out of those 13 games. Like, they they just won a lot of games that statistically they likely wouldn't always win. So, uh, also on this, um, injuries always seem to be an issue because of uh, depth issues. Like, can the young guys develop quickly enough to help them late in the season? You've got some studs around here. I think they're going to be okay. But again, you got to develop. And Dave Clawson's done it year after year after year. Their roster is never anything to write home about. And yet this year, you know, the number 40 strength, uh, our team strength in all of the country, that's pretty good for what they usually are. 
Uh, with the schedule like Clemson, Florida State, Army, Louisville, NC State, UNC, Syracuse, uh, the rushing defense has got to improve this year. Again, number 119 in success rate allowed. That's a key to the season. Uh, Wake Forest, again, this is something else that I haven't talked about a whole lot, but with these guys, it could be very important. Uh, they were lucky to have the second most accurate kicker in NCAA history. 89.9% for Nick Skiba, but he is gone. Uh, will Matt Dennis be good immediately? Like This is one of those guys, again, points per scoring opportunity. When you get down there and you can't get a first down, you have to be able to chalk up those three points. Is the new guy going to be that good? Uh, my my record here, I went back and forth on this. I had them eight and four. I'm I'm going to go with nine and three on this. Uh, I've got losses to Clemson, NC State, and Syracuse, but I could see them losing to Louisville. I could see them losing to North Carolina. I I want them to be good. I could I could see them losing to uh, Florida State on the road as well. This is going to be an interesting team to watch because we we always see this with with Wake Forest teams that are not as talented as some of the other teams that they are playing on their schedule. I want to know what Wake Forest's defense looks like because that cost them a couple of games last year. I want to see uh, if the offense continues at the same pace that they did last year. Even with all the returning production that they've got, again, 79% on offense. At the quarterback's coming back. they got four offensive linemen back. they got guys that really understand the system and know how to run it. The schedule's tricky. Like, really, really tricky. So, I'm I'm curious. I mean, they won some games, you know, late last year. Uh, Late-game heroic kind of stuff. Do they keep doing that with these experienced guys like the quarterback, Sam Hartman? That's what I want to know. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.